Hey, what's up YouTube? What's going on? Back here with a new video today. And in today's new video, what we're going to be talking about is a recent research article that was published regarding the McKenzie prone push-up for people with lower back pain. So to talk about this research article and the title of it is MRI evaluation of the effects of extension exercise on disc fluid content and location of the centroid of the fluid distribution. So what the researchers attempted to look at was to determine the effectiveness of the McKenzie prone push-up for people with lower back pain. And so they took MRIs at baseline and then they had people perform three sets of 10 repetitions of the McKenzie extension prone push-up exercise and people would go into full extension until they felt comfortable or kind of their limit. So they performed three sets, 10 repetitions, and then they conducted another MRI immediately after. And they attempted to look at if there were any changes in the way the fluid distribution occurred in the disc, if there was any differences in terms of baseline to afterwards. And if there was any indications of maybe differences in fluid distribution, this may suggest that there could be a better reabsorption of some of the nutrients or fluid within the disc that may help alleviate symptoms or promote healing. And what they found was that when measured at the L4, L5, and L5S1, they didn't find anything statistically significant from baseline to post after performing the three sets of 10 repetitions of McKenzie exercise. But there was one exception at the L4, L5, they found at the anterior portion of the disc, there was a, a significant change in the distribution of some of the fluid content, but it wasn't anything statistically overall significant to suggest that the McKenzie exercises are really having a acute or significant impact on changing that fluid distribution in the disc. So one of the limitations of the study was that they only looked at people classified with lower back pain and it was very general in terms of the recruitment process. They didn't specifically look at individuals with their disc height. They didn't break it down in disc height or maybe end plate problems. And the reason that is important because if we look back to McGill's research in which he conducted a study on looking at the effectiveness of these extension exercises and found that disc height played a significant role in the effectiveness of these McKenzie stretches and that people with 70% of their disc height or more remaining were the only ones that had improvements or had an effect from the McKenzie exercise or had a benefit of moving the nu nucleus material back into the center. So right there we see that disc height, we already know that that plays a role, but what we could see here is that based on the fluid distribution, there's no real significant difference when performing those McKenzie prone exercises. So it's not really having any change on the fluid content after performing three sets of 10 repetitions. So there's no real acute effect. And also the amount of people they recruited in the study was 22 people, but upon doing the evaluation, I believe it was only 21 that they were able to look at as one person's post MRI wasn't able to be analyzed for whatever reason. But uh, with that being said though, right here, this study supports or further kind of strengthens that argument that the McKenzie extension exercises aren't overall the best, in my opinion, for prescribing for someone for a herniated disc. I'm typically not the biggest fan of them and I typically advise against them just because I feel like there's a lot of issues with regarding them. Because when we go into the extension-based postures, sure, maybe if there is a change in fluid distribution like that they saw at the L405, the thing is though we're shifting a lot of that load or force onto the facet joints. Well, shifting the load on the facet joints is going to be, could create problems for someone with extension-based back pain, or if they don't already have extension-based issues, by repeatedly doing this over time could cause problems. So that's why I'm not the biggest fan of that. But at the same time, we see disc height plays a role, and depending on, even at the location at where the disc herniation is, L1, L2, L2, L3, L3, L4, L4, L5, L5, S1, that's also going to play a role as well, because of the degrees at which the spine can bend at that may that will have an influence as well so with all those factors come into play i feel like when it comes to prescribing this stretch or the prone push-up it's almost unless you have an mri that you're looking at in terms of somebody's structural uh spine and looking at the kind of the differences you're almost prescribing this stretch blindly to people and you don't really know what to expect at times and that's why i just don't feel like it's the best stretch out there or best exercise because I do feel like it can make people's cases worse, including myself. And this kind of research study here further supports that because as you can see, just performing an acute bout of this, 
when we're looking at the baseline of post MRI, there wasn't really any significant differences in terms of changes in fluid distribution. Anyways, I just wanted to share that with you guys because this is just a new research article that was published regarding the McKenzie prone push up because it's a commonly prescribed exercise for people with lower back pain. And in my opinion, I feel like it does a lot more harm than it does good for people. Sure, some people may experience benefits and might actually get better with it, but I feel like there's a lot of people that end up worse with it. And it's just overall, in my opinion, not the best kind of stretcher exercise to be prescribing for people with lower back pain, or more specifically the case of a herniated disc because of those limitations, like I mentioned. And really only an MRI probably will give you an indication if the McKenzie exercise is really appropriate for someone, or maybe if someone, if you had them go perform it and they start experiencing worse symptoms or whatnot, that would also be an indication as well. But like I said, I just feel like it's not the best exercise for someone to perform. And this is kind of some further research to kind of support that as well, as we don't see any changes kind of in the fluid distribution with regards to the disc. So that's all I wanted to say with this video, guys. If you have any questions, comments, or anything, leave them below and we'll wrap it up for this video. And until next time, guys, I wish you guys all the best and a successful and productive day and take care.